Allez. Thank you. It's unlike anything I've seen before, and it gets to a very uh, base level of humanity. It's a psychological thriller. It's not a horror film or, act or an action film. It's a world that could have been invented by Stephen King. It's a real character-driven story. There's a lot of characters inside. It's very detailed. Uh, their social backgrounds are very precise. And uh, everything happens in a small town. It's about ordinary people, ordinary problems. Uh, and this leads us to a wider scale, you know, to end like a, a tale about evil and then it escalates and spirals upwards and downwards and it's um it's a fascinating story well told very well told very well crafted the script pour avoir un public international il fallait que le film soit en anglais euh, et pour que le film soit en anglais la, la solution la plus facile c'était de faire venir un casting américain ou anglais en tout cas international what is crazy is that there were like i don't know maybe 50 50 actresses that uh, were Tate. The only one that he selected was Diana. She wasn't the Glee phenomenon at that time. I was, you know, uh, hooked because she had this natural grace, beauty, uh, simplicity also. Came out to Los Angeles to meet me a couple of months ago before we started shooting and we're so relaxed and so lovely and, you know, but you just don't know because that's before the pressure's on, that's before you're on set and trying to make your days. And they're so great and we've been smiling and laughing through it all. Elle n'est pas du tout commune, hein, cette fille-là. Elle n'est pas du tout commune. Non, non. Et puis même, euh, je trouve qu'il y a eu un, un rapport entre nous qui était très intéressant. Bon, bah, je pense qu'elle, elle est engagée. Il va falloir la réserver très très vite. Ouais, il faut faire quelque chose parce que... Il faut faire suivre quelque chose de ce qu'on est vous parce que... They, they are all talented actors. Wonderful actors. God, I was so lucky with the cast. On s'est entouré surtout d'une équipe avec des gens qui venaient de la télévision. Parce qu'on savait qu'en trois prises, les gens sont efficaces, donnent le meilleur d'eux-mêmes. Et que s'ils sont rompus en fait à une, à une dynamique, peut-être qu'on ne trouve pas forcément euh, au cinéma. Donc c'est pour ça qu'on a décidé de travailler avec John Aronson, qui est un chef opérateur très, très reconnu, qui a travaillé sur Heroes ou sur FBI Porte Disparu, par exemple. Il y avait des, des, des types de lumières que j'avais envie d'avoir sur ce film. Donc je me suis tourné vers ceux qui savent le faire le mieux et euh, ceux qui comprendraient cette vision-là euh, sans que j'ai besoin de passer par des heures d'explication. Il y a aussi l'idée de l'aventure qui leur plaît, c'est-à-dire venir en Europe euh, pour John pouvoir être opérateur, euh, faire quelque chose... Euh un peu guérilla, euh, qui ne ressemble pas à ce qu'ils font d'habitude. John, il a l'habitude de travailler sur des grosses séries de la Fox euh, qui n'ont pas la souplesse que nous, on peut avoir euh, à, à notre petite, petite échelle, plus petite échelle. Oui, je n'ai jamais travaillé avec aucun d'eux avant. Nous avons juste... Nous avons juste gelé depuis le début. C'était une grande expérience pour tous. Comment peuvent-ils dire qu'ils ont leurs meilleurs amis Ils ont juste rencontré. Steve Waddington est l'un de mes meilleurs amis. Et je l'ai seulement connu en un an which really helped our characters. We kind of became our characters in a way. Not in a big method out way, but we, um, we did the sort of things that the hunters would do. We all hung out together. It's quite a, quite a masculine cast. We were all into, I was into running, Jay's into lifting his weights, Terry was running, um, no, Terry wasn't, <laughs> Terry, Terry was only just walking. Um, Terence Knox, he's kind of like, He's like my granddad. I wouldn't say that to him because he'd get offended because he's because <laughs> he's he doesn't want me to call him old. Um, but he was, you know, he had that, you know, I felt like his grandson. Waddington, Stephen was, you know, fabulous, very professional. And yeah, everyone on the shoot was professional, but Stephen and I had a we got to work, talked about anything but work, and then we went and did this stuff as if we known each other all our lives, and then we turned out to be, you know, I think lifelong friends. It just kind of felt right. We, all, we almost became the hunters in a, in a very strange kind of way, um, without killing people, obviously. But just that in, the intensity, like Tony Becker, is probably the best friend I got in the world, and that's a sad comment. Yeah, but it's true. Okay, here we go, guys. For a sec. <laughs> Je suis calme, tu, 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 
Well, this is good. This is good. What bit is too tight? You guys? Uh, nobody else in your outfits. Oh, yeah, another one. Another one. Please. Okay. Okay, we're not worried about the smoke for this rehearsal, are we? Well, I've been waiting for it. Wolfgang? Yeah. Can we yeah. give it a quick uh, spurt, please? And, uh, you should move your truck out there. Of course, yes. Impeccable. I wanted a good uh, bluish cold winter movie with a lot of references to the movies that I loved when I was a kid uh, with this Christmas touch which is so magical but when it's the first movie it's a compromise you know between what you have in mind and what you'll be allowed to shoot first close up before the, uh, I'm bloody one close up after even if you want to, to get better shots, uh, more takes, uh, crane shots, uh, better special effects, you have to be focused on the acting, uh, atmospheres, and the credibility of everything you shoot. Like this? Yeah, yeah, And, uh, if the punch is, uh, uh, looks fake, It'd be ridiculous. It has to look, I and mean, it doesn't look good for the moment. Okay, thanks very much. That's lunch. The mood on this set was a lot of enthusiasm. It was the best crew. Crew from Luxembourg, from Germany, from France. The guys from Berlin were incredible. The people from the south of France, people from London, the crew, you know, these, it was fabulous. Everyone pitching in. How are you, my friend? <laughs> okay. Thank you. There are about, you know, anywhere from four to seven different languages being spoken around you at every moment, which is fascinating. I love it. Because I, I don't think I can say the H well. You don't say it. It's just... Yeah. It really helps when you like each other. The crew were amazing. Um, we had amazing, we had an amazing DOP, John Aronson, he was absolutely amazing. The, de the grips we had, the lighting men, the sound guys, um, the runners, everybody really was so positive and really wanted to make this project work. On the set, Chris was busy. <laughs> You'll be okay for a rehearsal? Or? Good. So let's rehearse. You're in front of them. Not you did. We're going to have four uh, attempts to shoot them. Okay. So I can't stand this door. Put a cross here around. She falls on the ground. He wants to make a move and you have to to stick the, the barrel here. It has to be kind of violent. Don't hurt the yeah, poor David. My move has to be quick. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to have to come in. What's the easiest way to find what now we know he's going in? Could it be that he's going for her rather? Because if he comes for me, it's very dangerous. That's right, it's, it's, for, it's, for, each other. Yeah, it's for her. Yes. He makes so a, a gesture for her. Then, that, then yeah. that's what Jesus That's right. Bon, déjà Chris je le connaissais déjà avant, donc j'ai déjà dit, donc c'est vrai que je savais, et c'est vrai que ça s'est confirmé dans le film, c'est quelqu'un qui, qui sait exactement ce qu'il veut faire et où il veut aller. Et ça je trouve que c'est très rassurant pour nous quand on, quand on est dans un film parce que c'est très clair, il a des informations très précises. Et dès qu'il il a un œil en plus qui est très qui est très aiguisé, c'est-à-dire qu'il voit tout de suite, si on n'est pas dans la bonne intention, il va, il va tout de suite recadrer les choses. Donc c'était 
C'était très facile de travailler avec lui. Well, he's a first-time director, so uh, we were aware of that. Um, so everybody's thinking, is he going to be any good? Uh, and he was good. He was good. I think he, he slipped into the role very, very easily, very quickly, very smoothly. Um, uh, was, uh, you wouldn't think they hadn't directed before. With me, maybe he was a little bit different with everybody. I, I don't, I don't know. But uh, with me, we kind of got to a stage where my character does such extreme things that we kind of found a place that actually. Um, Terence Knox uh, put our way, which is uh, in America after doing, after nailing a couple of takes, um, they do a thing where so they call it a rock and roll tape. So do whatever you want, do the same thing, but be really free and do what you like. I think me and Chris jumped on that. Once I knew that I got some of the scenes in the bag, we'd do what he called rock and roll tapes and, and we'd just let ourselves go and, and, and go as far as we could. So, um, <clears throat> so for me, you know, for a first time director to trust an actor to be able to do that is, uh, is, is a good thing and I think he managed to harness the whole production, uh, bring a certain degree of creativity to it as well as acting in the thing as well. I mean, I don't envy his position. He had a lot to do, he had a lot to do. I think he did it really well. He wanted some stuff that I thought was absolutely wrong I, I didn't want to do it and he'd say trust me and go trust you well you look like you're 24 years old am I gonna trust you and I say that now the guy was right did some very very creative stuff with this and he's given me and I'll say this too some of the best direction I've ever been given he, without question he, he came up with some stuff and you need that I think he's a very good director. I think he did a very good job. I mean, this is his first shot at it. And then, suddenly, anger. Give you some advice, man. You should do that, you should do that. It's not so bad. It's a funny sequence. I've been rather lucky because my past two projects right before this, you know, Glee is a job that takes me through the year, which I love, and this other film that I worked on, everybody's been so nice, and you hear these horror stories of these crews or these directors and I want to know nothing of that because all I've known this year is just the most wonderful people. And we have to face several snowstorms. It's very happy circumstances that it's been snowing and so beautiful because I think it really adds to the film. Initially in the script, it was supposed to be rain and it was one of the coldest winter ever in France. It was like minus, I think minus 10, minus 15 sometimes. God, it was cold. God, it was cold. We tried many, many things like uh, air, air blowers, uh, flame throwers uh, to, to just get rid of the snow. And uh, we are always fighting against daylight because, you know, in winter, uh, darkness uh, is coming after 30 past 4. Every day it's a race, you know, to get the amount of shots we need. But on the 18th of uh, January, it's the last day of shooting. We knew that we had no money for an extra day, and we knew that we had to finish the film this day. And, uh, and it was crazy. We, I don't know how many, how many shots we did this day, but I think it was past 30. <laughs> Okay, so let's drop this uh, sheet. Alright, so. Uh, can you call? Uh, Larry? Let's see if we need that one. So for. I'm going to hold the first house at the gate, so can we go to the 18? Yeah. And the second one. I need to frame the camera. Follows me. Taking the stairs. Carrying the luggage with the exit. <laughs> no, but do you want me to see you though? Or can I? Yeah.
when it's your first picture, everybody will tell you, just don't do it. That's impossible, you won't make it. We don't have a network, we don't have money, nobody knows us, so everything is closed. You start the, the project and then you discover step by step what, what are going to be the, uh, the problem and the issues and the, uh, the boundaries of the, of the whole thing. Have a drink and we'll get up and do it again tomorrow. <laughs> it's a war, you know, to shoot the first movie. Always, I mean, all the directors I met that uh, had this chance to, to shoot the first movie told me that. Uh, you have to fight against everything, against everybody, because nobody believes in you. You have to believe in yourself and you have to believe in your dream, because at the beginning it's a dream, and it has to remain a dream at the end. And uh, so it's the first picture, I mean, it won't be the best, it won't be the worst. It's unique, it's, uh, it's your first baby, you know. But it's doable, I mean, you can start with nothing and uh, end with, uh, with a movie. Uh, you just have to work hard and uh, keep dreaming. Did you get it? Did you ever want to leave? It's always the same. Same faces, same streets, same everything. Come with me Sunday morning. I will show you like the weirdest place, but I can tell you nothing more about it. Okay. They wanted the perfect escape, but some places. If you think I'm going in there, I'm not. It's creepy. Come on, it's starting to snow again. Aren't as peaceful. It's kind of cool in here. As they look. <laughs> Run! Starring Diana Agron. <laughs> I'll give you a head start. <laughs> you are the prey. Did you get it? They are. The Hunters. This was found in a storage unit belonging to your father. What is it? We don't know. We thought you might like to keep it. For 200 years. What's this? That's the last of my dad's estate. Its existence has been a mystery. Creepy. This was your dad's? Yeah. I've never seen anything like that. Move in. Smile. But now, seven friends will discover the machine was built as a tool for revenge. The terrifying truth. It's gone. in this ordinary town. It's nice to see you again, Cole. It's good to finally be here. Hidden within these walls, there lies a dark secret. But what began as isolated events 
Do you think the facility has anything to do with these disturbances? I can't comment on that. Will become an experiment. <laughs> in pure terror. These guys are supposed to be curing a disease, not infecting people with another one. This hurts, Mom! <laughs> no! What the hell is he doing? Psychic experiment. No shit. Jesus, you are our hope. Rise, brothers and sisters! Lord Jesus, bless this child. I'm not going crazy, Father. You gotta listen to me for a second, Michael. I've seen this before. There was this boy, Daniel. Son, you can't hide from me forever. The boy claimed that he was being haunted by a demon. Father Phineas focused on guilt and sin. It only gave the demon more power. Father Phineas failed. I'm damned, Father. And you, you and my priest, have failed me. Just like you have always failed. What happened to the boy, to Daniel? Bad girl. Bad, bad girl. It was something I never want to see again. Confess, confess. Tell me. <laughs> Except <sighs> there's no hope. There's only God's will. Your time is up. God's will cannot be questioned. premium channel that's not just on television wow. it's on TV on demand and online give it a try thousands of HD blockbusters it's like this scan or something precious real woman sacrifice you got it oh yeah till death do us part from Hollywood's biggest studios Everywhere right now. Whoa. Wow, that felt really good. Bravo. Box office hits. It's rare. It's awesome. Exclusive concert events with Grammy Award winning superstars. Comedy specials featuring the best voices in comedy. I love it. It's insanity. Plus, unprecedented access to Hollywood's biggest stars. Did I say we were done? EpicsHD.com gives new meaning to social networking. And for the first time, truly share the experience online. So if you don't see it on cable, you can catch it on the computer. Isn't that genius? That's the way everything's moving now. More world television premieres. More HD streaming online. Boom! The most HD movies on demand. Epics. Big on any screen. Call your TV service provider to order Epics.